Okay, guys, so here we are. We're going to get started now. Now, I know that I'm trying to make a set of eight, but I have about nine, ten balls here. The reason why I'm going to do is I want to get my shape first, and I'm going to make my first one in as few pulls as I can. I'm going to aim for sort of this tankard shape that I'm uh, kind of known for, sort of my signature shape. I'm going to go ahead and center that first ball of clay. Now, a lot of people are gonna ask, how do I make them the same size? Well, we're gonna get to that. But the main important thing, as I said earlier, is to start with the ball the exact same weight, or pretty damn close. Okay, I'm gonna go down wide a little bit, because I want... So I wanna really have a bit of muscle memory now as to how far back my arm is so that I know how wide my mound of clay is. Now I'm gonna go ahead and throw this one pot. I'm gonna realize that I don't want a foot, so I'm gonna go down pretty far. I want the bottom of my pot to be super wide, so I'm gonna open up at the width of the clay. My very first pull, I'm actually gonna do when I open. Compress that lip. Start down on the bottom, slow down my wheel a little bit. Start to go up. Get this a little taller, so I'm going to go ahead and collar a little bit so I can get myself a little bit more clay. Get down on the bottom. Grab some clay. Bring it up to the top. And flare that lip a little bit. Now the first one may take you a little bit. You're trying to really decide what that shape is going to be. You're going to try and get all the clay in there. So I'm just gonna sort of finesse it to see what the shape is that I'm aiming for. So I'm gonna call this a pot. I'm gonna get the water out of the inside. Now I'm gonna do minimal maintenance to these pots. So I really don't wanna trim very much. I may not trim at all. So I'm gonna take off as much as I can with my wood tool. And I wanna try and get a nice finish on that just in case I decide to just sort of finger finesse it at the end. Now I do not wire my pots um, on the wheel. Uh, I don't know, I think there's more room for error. I saw years ago, read somewhere that by not wiring your pot on the wheel, you may avoid some S cracks. And I just, I'm trying to do this in a fast motion. So I'm just gonna leave it. Now there's a couple of things I can do. I can create a gauge using a chopstick or something long to create the next shape. But I'm gonna be concerned of the fact that my first pot is never as good as my second and third and fourth. And then I believe that my next pot, I'm probably gonna get it a little taller. So I'm actually not gonna do anything at this point, but just for my own reference, I will measure to see where I'm at. I'm a big fan of the ruler. So it is, three and three quarters wide by five inches high. I can write that right on here. I'm gonna move this to the side. I'm gonna put it in my first position, which is right on the edge of my block here. Now I've got my bats right on my left, so I could just go ahead and get started. Get rid of my air bubbles. Go ahead, stick that on there. Now I'm gonna aim for the same shape, but I'm not gonna be as concerned with the size of the first one. But I wanna really make sure that I'm not wasting any clay when I'm centering. Sometimes when I'm doing bigger pots or I'm not trying to match something else, I'll take a lot off when I'm trying to center. I won't, I'll not remember to dry, wet my hands so some of the clay comes off on my hands, but I'm really concerned with every ounce here. Go on down. Now remember, if you go farther down or not as far as the first one, 
you're going to be leaving a lot of clay down on the bottom and that could also be equivalent to a bit of height that you're going to lose. So that bottom amount that you live down there needs to start to be pretty consistent as well. So I am going to reference back to my other shape. Sometimes uh, these little plastic bats will get a little loose, so I'll have to remember not to pull up as much because that'll actually lift the entire pot up off of the bat. So I'm gonna try and repeat what I did before by doing the same motion. So I pull to twice and then I collared so that I can get a little extra clay in there. and get the same shape that I was aiming for before. Super important to have the same lip. Now lips vary, they could be straight on top or they can be rounded. And I'm talking not just the flare over, I'm talking the actual lip themselves. Now in a community studio, it's very hard to maintain a, um, a chamois. They tend to end up in the slip buckets. So if you use a chamois, Put it on a piece of cork so it floats, um, but a chamois will help you really get that lip rounded. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and call that a pot as well. Got to finish up that lip. I'm sorry, that bottom. Now, I'm just curious to see if I measure this, if I got more clay into it, three and a half, by about five and a quarter. Now that could be because I'm a little narrower than my other one. Or it could be that I just got more clay into it. I actually think that I can feel that this one feels as though it's a little lighter. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna judge everything based on this second one. So again, I can use a ruler, which I am a big fan of, or another thing you can do is you can set up a gauge. So there are these you know tools you can buy that have this stand and it sticks out. Um, I prefer to just put a big glob of clay on my splash pan. I make my chopstick aim, not touching the lip of my pot, but I try and have about an eighth of an inch. So they always know that that distance is eight and an, eight and an eighth of an inch. And then this is going directly towards the lip and then that's an eighth of an inch away. Here's your other learning point, trying to get this off without banging into the gauge. I'm gonna put that in the second position, which is farther away. Push that one back a little. Now I'm gonna keep going. surprised that if you have one little spot that's a little thicker than the rest you're gonna notice that you're able to really get some space some height if you just put a little more pressure on that you'd be so surprised that that part that is thicker than the rest of your pot that you would normally go ahead and trim off will actually give you that slight bit of height that you're aiming for. All right.
again, I'm just going to double check this one with a ruler. Just curiosity. Oh, but your ruler has to be clean. Three and a half by a little over. So it's a little wider, so I'm just going to fix that by going and collaring in just a little. There we go. Now we've got that eighth of an inch away from the the gauge. Look for my wood tool. Organization is probably um, one of the best um, skills and talents you can have when you make pottery. I don't have it. So, all right. So these next ones, I'm actually just going to go ahead because the most important part about Making a set is muscle memory. So you don't want to start, make one, and then move on to the next. The same way you don't play golf, hit a, a nine iron, and then hit your driver. So I'm going to go ahead and go.
Okay, so there they are. I want you guys to notice that that's my first one. And the rest of them are slightly taller. I did make nine of them so that I can hopefully end up with a set of eight. I would normally have made 10, but I'm gonna make a confession. I made these balls yesterday. And as I started to throw, I noticed that some of the balls were a little drier. You might've seen me struggle. I think overall, they kind of look the same. There are a couple that I may go back and fix the lip, like that one right there. Um, as again, I talked about the importance of your lip looking similar on all of your pots. And that one seems to be a little straighter on top and the glaze is gonna break differently there. And it's going to be a little less comfortable to drink from.